before we move on from this game, why don't I ask you about Nathan Doak? Because he's a player who, as you mentioned on Ordeal, I believe, feels like he's been around for an awfully long time yeah. and is probably more seasoned than a lot of guys his age would be at this juncture of his career. He's up against Craig Casey, who would be the man against whom most would compare him in the sense that like they're probably vying for the same Ireland spot for the moment if Jamison Gibson Park remains first choice. And it's funny because I've seen the two of them play against each other enough times to know that Doe probably has a pretty good record against Casey. I know Casey scores two tries in that monster game and I actually don't think he was really, he didn't really get a, a platform himself from which to play for the final hour of the game. But like, this is a long-winded way of my asking, what do you think Doe has to do to muscle his way into the Ireland reckoning and, and sort of rejoin that conversation that he was definitely a part of about 18 months ago as somebody who we were, we were really excited by, not only as a talent for Ulster, but as a guy with potential international credentials. He has to keep John Cooney out of the team now that he's back and he has to be the clearly dominant number one in Ulster, I think. And maybe that's a bit unfair because Casey isn't that in Munster, but Casey has the exact skill set that Farrell wanted in that third scrum half role. And he does fit kind of with what they're they're trying to do. Now he's had to definitely round out his game and Doak has probably had to start showing other elements that are more in line with, with what Warren do. And I think he's doing that. He's kind of like the like the Ruan Pinar comparison is is really easy to make because it actually fits. And when he first came through he had that controlling nature. His kicking game is really good. You saw one lovely kick off the back of a line break where Henderson goes through and he just rolls the ball in the right corner in the second half. It was a lovely touch, and he does that really well. But it's almost you fall into the trap of thinking that's just the, the nine he is, and then you don't notice that he, actually he's improved his service. He's getting the ball away quicker. And I do think he's he's growing and improving as a player. He's still only 21. He's going to be absolutely integral for, for Ulster. He seems to have a really composed, calm head. He can kick goals as well, which is nice. Um a nice skill set to have. And actually, you, you, you kind of you compared the records against each other. I wonder who's won more of these games. And you think maybe that's not actually how it works because it's a team thing and it's they're so dependent on everyone around them. But I I don't know if you noticed, but Casey was really looking for for Doak when he was celebrating wins for Munster. There was one stage where Casey wins a Jackal turnover penalty, screams in Marcus Ray's face first, and then he turns around, he finds Nathan Doak on the ground. And he screams down at him on the on the ground. And actually, Jack Crowley has to come in and pull Casey away. And McCann takes exception to it. But it was very pointed. And it really gave me an insight into Casey actually feels a bit of heat here. And he he recognized that this guy's my direct rival, as you said, Gav, for an Ireland jersey. And there was another little moment where the two were on the ground. It was kind of funny, actually. They were pulling at each other after the ball had gone, the two nines, typically cranky. But I think that's great to see. I think the fact that Doak is rising again he's on the he's on the upward trajectory again is something that Casey will be really aware of and yeah I don't know I'd love to hear again it's one of those things where you think I wonder what Farrell really thinks or what he sees as being the next step for for Doak I don't know the exact answer to it but he's definitely in and around that kind of that mix and if he keeps Cooney out of the team come Six Nations time he'll absolutely be vying for a, a squad place and when I'm talking about the records against each other, I don't even necessarily mean results. I mean more my the, the, the vibes I would have gotten from each of their performances. Like just a couple of times yeah. where I felt possibly even in Monster Wins where Doak might have shaded Casey. But it, like that's my untrained eye, to be clear. But I do think that some of Casey's reactions and, and celebrations towards Doak are probably born of, of that knowledge as well. Or a mm. suspicion that a lot of people still think this guy is just a better player than I am. And that I'm fortunate to be in that Ireland jersey compared to him. And, it's a lovely little rivalry. I mean, it is. Like, They're both young. Marcus, sorry? They're both young as well. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So there's a lot of road to run, which uh, could be very enjoyable in the years to come. 